y'all. Welcome to the channel again. Um, I actually recorded the video already, <laughs> and I was uh, in in there starting to do my editing, and I was going to take a picture of the handy dandy little map and information pamphlet that I was speaking of later on in the video. <laughs> And I decided that I, I didn't hit on a lot of the attractions there in Sitka, and I think it's really important to go ahead and tell you guys about um, several of the places in Sitka that you can go to. Um, I know a lot of people are real history buffs, and as I stated in the video a little bit later on, I'm not a huge history um, person. I don't, I don't really feel comfortable talking about a lot of. Um, history on my tours because like I said I get people from all over the world on tours and sometimes if you talk about um, battles between this nationality and that nationality you may have you know some of each nationality on the boat and they may not appreciate you talking about one nationality against the other and I just don't feel like that's something that I feel comfortable doing so I don't do a lot of history on my tours um, I do know a lot of history of places where I am, just in case someone has a question, you know, ask me something about something to do with, with the history of wherever I'm at. I do learn a lot of that, but I don't incorporate it a lot into my um, my tours. I just don't. I think if people are, the majority of people, if they're on a wildlife tour, a wildlife quest, looking for wildlife, I think they want to hear more about the wildlife and, and things like that. And there are history tours that you can take. So if you want to learn all about the history, um, I suggest taking one of their really, really cool history tours in Sitka. Sitka is full of history, as I said um, later on in the video. <laughs> this is, you're going to feel like you went back in time, you're going to feel like you're on back to the future or something, because this was a, a last moment thought. Um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of read over it and tell you some of the really cool places that you can go, some of the historic places and attractions there. And they're also called the, um, the Sitka Sound Science Center, the Sitka Sea Life Center. <laughs> That's not right. So later on in the video when you hear me say Sitka Sea Life Center, just scratch that and put Sitka Sound Science Center. <laughs> the Sitka sea, or the sea Life Center is in Seward. It's the Seward Sea Life Center. So, it's, you know, got it mixed up there. <laughs> but, you know, Oh well. Um, so I'm just going to read over this and tell you some, tell you all the really cool places to go in Sitka, Alaska. Because, like I said, a lot of people really love history and they like to do vlogs on history and they like to, you know, learn about history of different places. And it's really interesting to some people, and it's interesting to me too. I just don't always like to incorporate it into my tours because I don't want to offend anybody or disrespect someone. And, you know, nowadays it's getting kind of hard to, to talk about history amongst people because there's so many people who um, feel disrespected by, you know, things that happen in history. And I just don't want to, I just don't want to be a part of that. Just, I love all people. I love all nationalities. I, you know, but, no, <laughs> I won't, I won't go there. Um, I think, I think history is important um, in the right places, you know, and I'm just not a big history person, so. Anyway, I'm going to read this um, and tell you guys about it. Here's the map there. You can see, and this is really amazing that there's so many things to do in Sitka in such a small space. Like I said, there's only about 24 road miles, and that includes, um, the you know the, the main road through Sitka which is 12 miles and then the residential areas and the roads that get you to some of these attractions and all told there's only 24 miles about 24 miles of roadway so this is a lot a lot to see in such a small place so um, in Baranoff, Baranoff Castle Hill of course Sitka is on Baranoff Island um, the Castle Hill is uh, has stunning panoramic views of Sitka, and it was an early stronghold of the Kixadi clan. Clan. Later, and I probably won't pronounce all these native names right, 
because I just hard to pronounce a lot of these things. But I'll come as close as possibly can. <laughs> so the later successions of Russian buildings occupied the hill, including Baranov's castle from 1837 to 1894. This is also the site of the Alaska transfer from Russia to the United States on October 18, 1867. Um, so that's a really cool, interesting place. I talked a little bit about it in the video. It's way up on a hill. There's cannons up there. Um, it's beautiful views, like it says. Stunning views. Stunning panoramic views. <laughs> St. Michael's Cathedral is located in the heart of downtown. The Russian Orthodox Cathedral is an exact replica of the original that was destroyed in 1966. Um, it's an important collection of art and rare treasures housed, housed inside. Uh, the original one was actually um, burned. It caught on fire and people ran in and tried to get out all of the original stuff as much as possible and they did come out with a lot of the original the furniture and, and things like that out of the Russian Orthodox Church, but it was burned in 1966. Um, also, now that one has donations suggested. It's it's free, but you can also donate stuff. Um, all all of these attractions in Sitka pretty much are free, and there is a historic tour that you can take, and they will take you around to a lot of these places. Now that does cost extra, but it's a really interesting tour. Uh, the Sitka. Lutheran Church is the site of the first Protestant church on the West Coast. Protestant, sorry. Protestant church on the West Coast of North America. It contains artifacts from the original 1843 Finnish Lutheran Church, 1844 Kessler organ, chandelier, pulpit, and a communion rail. So it's got a lot of historic um, things inside of it, furniture and everything. It's a really beautiful place. The Harrigan Centennial Hall and Summer Information Desk. If you go to Sitka, you definitely want to go to one of the information desks and they can give you one of these little maps if you haven't already ordered one. And they can tell you where a lot of this really cool stuff is. And they can hook you up with uh, how to take the tour and all of that. So the Harrigan Centennial Hall and Summer Information Desk was built in 1967. It's the Civic Center ho that houses the Sitka Historical Museum. During the summer on large cruise ship days, an information desk is available and the new Archangel dancers perform, and they are fantastic. It's a group of young ladies there from Sitka, ladies and gentlemen, actually, and they put on a really nice uh, dance show for you. It's really cool. The Sitka Historical Museum is the place where all elements of Sitka's history converge packed with displays, photographs, and artifacts from Sitka's Plinket, Russian, and American history. Um, that one does cost, I'm not sure exactly what the cost is, but it does cost a little bit to go into that. It's, it's not very much. The Russian Bishop's House was built in 1842 by the Russian American Company as a residence for the Bishop of the Orthodox Church. It's the oldest intact Russian building in Sitka. St. Bishop Innocent Father Vinyaminov was its first resident. St. Peter's by the Sea Episcopal Church, made of natural stone and wood. This is the oldest standing church in Sitka with a unique stained glass rose window. It's very beautiful. The first service was held in 1899. There's Sitka, Sitka Sound Science Center. <laughs> And it is an experience, it says, experience the amazing diversity of the many creatures that thrive in our surrounding waters at the aquarium, wet lab, and on-site fish hatchery. And that one does cost too, but it's funny. I forget what it is. Maybe a little more now too, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm not going to quote any prices because I don't want to be held accountable for that. <laughs> you, can, you can go online and Google this stuff and find out what it costs and everything. The hours, all that kind of stuff. Um, the Sheldon Jackson State Museum was established in 1887. It's Alaska's oldest museum, and it resides in the state's first concrete building erected eight years later. This jewel in the Crown of Alaska ethnographic collections focuses on native artifacts from throughout the state during the 1880 and 1900 periods. 
Now one does cost to get in there too, but it's not much. Like I said, none of these are really super expensive. Sitka Fine Arts Campus, which was formerly the Sheldon Jackson College, is now home to a nationally acclaimed program that provides artistic development for youth K-12 in visual arts, music, dance, theater, writing, and Alaska Native Arts. And you can go and you can actually tour that and see what projects they're working on and stuff. The Sitka National Historic Historical Park is a 107-acre park preserve and it interprets the site of the Battle of 1804 between the Clinket and the Russians. The Haida Clinket totems from the Louisiana Exposition in the early 1900s as well as modernly carved poles are located along a gravel pathway that meanders through the rainforest and it goes along a river and it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. They have hiking trails, like it says, they have trails you can walk on. And the totem poles are really cool. It tells all about them, what their meaning is, different things like that. Um, there are um, really nice restrooms within the park, so you can you can hike and look through. We've got a restroom there, right there, you know, on the hiking trails. Um, it's a really cool tide pool there that you can walk down to and, and kind of look in there. I kind of went over this one a little bit in the video. Which you'll see a little later once you like, jump through time and you get there. <laughs> um, yeah, so, something else I was going to tell you about that. I don't remember. Anyway, I went, like I said, I went over a little bit in the video. Um, the Alaska Raptor Center is a pioneering wildlife project which offers close up encounters with bald eagles and other birds of prey. And the goal is to rehabilitate injured birds and release them back into the wild. However, some never recover flight and remain housed at the center's outdoor display. Um, that one does cost also to get into that one, which isn't very much. And the money goes to a good cause, you know, it goes to rehabilitation and, and feeding the birds and stuff. Um, the Fortress of the Bear, a bear rescue center where magnificent resident bears roam in a naturalized setting. Viewing is from above in a covered area. You can take photos and memories that last a lifetime. That one also costs, which isn't very much. And um, if you're on a cruise ship, you can get an excursion. To a lot of these places, you can get packages where you go to several of the excursions. They'll pick you up and the buses take you one and then pick you up and take you to another one. So you can check with your concierge about that. Um, if you're just wanting to go there, you can, you can just go and pay the admission. Um, and like I said, it's not very much. If all the money goes towards um, rehabilitating bears and um, paying for the food, paying for the people that work there. And their gift shop is really cool. And all that money also goes into helping um, with the bear, with the cost of the bears. Uh, Sitka National Cemetery is laid out in the late 19th century by General Jefferson C. Davis. Uh, notable, notable burials there include the world's fastest human, <laughs> Olympic, Olympic multi-gold medalist Charles Paddock, and Medal of Honors recipient Archie Van Winkle are buried there in the Sitka National Cemetery. There's also a Russian cemetery. It's over 200 years old. It has many headstones crafted from the ballasts of Russian ships. Super, super cool place. A fasc fascinating reminder of Siska's Russian past. It's super cool. Princess Maksotov's grave. Princess Maksotov was the wife of the last Russian governor, Dmitry Maksutov. There's a Russian blockhouse. It's a replica of a guard tower that was once part of the massive fort surrounding this former Russian-American capital. Um, there's the Alaska Native Brotherhood Hall, which was built in 1914. It's located in the Clinket Village, and it serves as an Alaska Native Community Center. The Shika Kwan Na Kahidi Clan House. Again, I'm not sure if I said that exactly right, but I think I got pretty close. Uh, it was built in the style of a Clinket clan house with the largest hand-carved house screen in the Pacific Northwest. The Na Kahidi native dancers perform outside during the summer. 
there's Totem Square, which is a grassy Alaska State Park area in downtown Sitka containing a totem pole that displays the double-headed eagle of Sitka's Russian heritage. Uh, Pioneer Hall, uh, the state home for the elderly Alaskans, was built in 1934. A massive pioneer statue made of bronze by Alonzo Victor graces the building's front area. And like I said later on in the video too, they, uh, they do crafts, arts and crafts there. And they have a arts and crafts shop inside of the visitor center. You can go in for inside of the uh, Pioneer Home. Um, you can go in there and buy their arts and crafts. Which they make some really neat stuff. So that's um that's what I wanted to go over. I wanted to kind of go over all of the attractions. There's probably a couple more things there that I didn't go over, but that's for the most part. That's all of the things that are there in Sitka. Like I said, there's boat excursions, there's the Alamarine tours, tours, there's a couple other tour companies, there's um, flights out of the airport there, and I went over all of that in the video later on when you like jump forward into time and watch the actual video. I just, I felt like when I was taking a picture of, the, of this, I felt like I needed to do a lot more of that because a lot of you might be interested in, in doing um, history blogs and things like that and, and Sitka is an amazing place to go to the history blog. You could go there. Um, you could stay maybe four or five days a week and just get some amazing blog footage or just enjoy it. I mean, a lot of people are just history buffs and love to see things like that. So I highly recommend going to Sitka for all of that. And now I'm going to just um, edit this all back together. <laughs> and um, go on from there and like I said the video tells a little bit more about Sitka places to see, places to go um, population, that kind of thing but it's in the video as you'll see a little bit later on y'all welcome to the channel again today I think I'm gonna do a video on Sitka Alaska so I'm gonna um, do a little talking do the video and then between video parts I'm gonna do some still pictures and maybe some other video clips from things that you can do in Sitka Alaska um so Sitka, Alaska is a very beautiful place. It's probably one of my favorite places in Alaska. I know I um, always say this is my favorite place or that's my favorite place or <laughs> so on and so on, but actually it's Sitka is one of my favorite places in Alaska. Uh, Valdez being my first favorite. The ride, the drive over to Valdez, like I said the other day, is, uh, is very beautiful. It's my favorite place in Alaska, I think. <laughs> But Sitka is very close up there. It's way up there on the top of the list of favorite places. Um, so Sitka, Alaska is actually an island. And it's on, well, it's on an island. It's on the Baranoff Island. And it is part of the Tongass National Forest, which is the largest forest in the United States. Um, I'm going to do a whole separate video on the Tongass National Forest because there are a lot of things I want to talk about in the Tongass National Forest. So I'll wait and do another video on the Tongass National Forest. But it is 17 million acres. Um, so it, it is a whole video worthy. <laughs> There's so much to talk about in the Tongass National Forest. So that one will come along a little bit later on. Uh, but as far as Sitka goes, a uh, very beautiful place. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go to the southeast section of Alaska, I would definitely uh, visit Sitka. 
for the other islands down there, Ketchikan, and then also the state capital of Alaska is an island, um, Juneau, uh, is only accessible by plane or boat, or the ferry, you can take the ferry. And on the last video, if you haven't watched my video prior to this one, I told a lot about traveling to Alaska, how to get there and everything like that, and I talked a little bit about the ferry. I'm also going to do another video but later on about just about the ferry and with some of the, the views and different things that you see from the ferry and uh, a little bit more in depth on how to actually take the ferry to Alaska. Um, so Sitka is um, on the, the tour, the, the cruise ship tour port list, I guess you'd say. They do go into Port there in Sitka, Alaska lots and lots of um, vessels each year go into Sitka there. Um, and there's lots of excursions and things like that to do in, in Sitka and that's kind of what I'm going to cover also is some of the excursions, some of the attractions there on Sitka. Um, to be such a, a small area uh, of actual city of Sitka, now the, the city limits of Sitka is um, it's huge. It's um, only 12 miles or 13 miles from one end of Sitka City to the other end of the city. And um, there's about 20, 26 or 27 total road miles. That includes all the little uh, rural community roads and everything also. So it's pretty small in size if you consider that. But you also um, consider a lot of other little islands, the water, everything within the Sitka city limits is actually a lot larger than that. And I'll cover that when I talk about the more about the Tongass National Forest. Um, now, when I worked in Sitka, I was on the uh, Sea Otter and Wildlife Quest tour through Alamarine Marine tours, and so I did a lot of um, of the animals and and flora and fauna and volcanic things and that kind of stuff when I was on the boat there in Sitka. There were a lot of uh, other people that knew a lot of the history of Sitka and uh, it was very interesting. Sitka. Before it was, was called Sitka, it was actually known as New Archangel by the Russians from about 1799 to 1867. I have to read some of my history because <laughs> I kind of need to brush up on it a little bit. Um, if I ever go back and work again, but like I said, my tours, I'm a naturalist and I know all about animals, I know about uh, all sorts of nature things, and that's basically what my, what my tour was based on was, um, was that kind of thing, but there were other naturalists and other um, history people there who knew a lot about it and they told a lot about the history of Sitka, and like I said, it's very interesting, but I'm not a real history person. I don't do a whole lot of history because a lot of times when you're on a on a tour and you're with people from all over the world, you know, you have to be kind of careful about what you say about history and things like that these days. And um, you don't want to insult anybody or disrespect somebody who sees history as something different than, you know, than what you see it as or, or what you express it as. So I try to stay away from a lot of history about different places when I'm doing tours. That's why I like to do wildlife cruises and <laughs> wildlife tours because that I know about and uh, yeah it's, it's not going to really upset anybody I don't think. <laughs> Hopefully not anyway but I just feel like history sometimes causes a little bit of problems with people and it really shouldn't because it is part, it is history but a lot of people take history really personally and that's okay. I can understand that. Um, so I'm not going to do a lot of history on here of Sitka. You can research Sitka and you learn all about the history of Sitka. It's very, very interesting. There's a lot of battles fought there in uh, Sitka among the, the Japanese and you know, the Russians, Americans, all, you know, war and things like that, battles. So there's a lot of that type of history. There's a, actually a fort, that, an old fort that you can walk up to. It was like a where they had a lot of their cannons and things like that. The cannons are all still up there and it's it's round and they could actually shoot from any direction up there on top of the, where the fort was. 
So that's something interesting to see through there. If you really like history, there's a lot of history there. There's a lot of Russian history there. There's the Russian Orthodox Church in the middle of the town square, which is really nice, really pretty place to go. You can uh, visit that too. Uh, you used to could go inside. I'm not sure if they've started letting people back inside or not. I know for a little while it was um, it was closed due to the COVID and stuff, so I'm not sure if you can go inside of it anymore or not. But you used to could go in there. You could go and you could tour the bishop's house and, and everything. So really cool. Like I said, lots of history in, in Sitka. Super interesting. Um, uh, Sitka occupations there in Sitka. A lot of people work in uh, the tourism tourist industry. They work as fisher fishermen. There's a lot of fishing boats that go out of there. There's a cannery there where they can they do canning of fish, things like that. There's um, a lot of medical personnel out there in Sitka the hospitals and things. There's uh, a lot of, you know, family-owned businesses. The drugstore in town has been owned by family for many years. There's a, there's a, like a dime store there. Um, ben Franklin dime store. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that or not, though. Um, but there's a Ben Franklin there. There's um, a lot of souvenir shops that are owned by people. There's a bookstore. There's a little, uh, there's little pubs and taverns and places where the fishermen go, which is really interesting if you're, you know, a fisherman buff or something. You can go in some of those places and you can actually talk to some of the, some of the fishermen that have been doing it for all these years, and they can tell you some really cool stories and stuff. So that's really interesting. There's also a, um, like a, assisted living there on. In Sitka, a lot of uh, native elders and things like that are living there now at the assisted living place. Really nice place. Uh, the residents there do crafts, arts and crafts, and then they have a little shop inside of the um, assisted living home where they actually sell their crafts. <laughs> so that's really cool. Make a little extra money there selling their arts and crafts. They make some really pretty stuff too. You see, there a lot of them are native artists. So um, there's also, like I said, there's the Russian Orthodox Church there. There's um, there's a actually a state trooper training center on Sitka, <laughs> which I always thought was a little bit strange because there's really not, you know, I mean, you can't get out and do any high speed chases or anything like that. Training, if you do this obstacle course thing, we used to go and sit and watch them at the where they do the obstacle course, watch them learn how to drive the these cruisers. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So there's that state trooper training center there. There's also a um, huge Coast Guard facility there. So there's a lot of Coast Guard uh, members that live there in Sitka. There's a, a small um, small school there. It's part of the um, University of Alaska. It's the, it's the Sitka um, part of the university. So there's, you know, college students there and things. Um, Sitka does have um, an elementary school and a high school and a junior high school too. So they have their, their schools and everything. There, like I said, there's only 12 miles, 12, 13 miles from one end of Sitka to the other if you drive straight through town and on the other side. <laughs> um, so it's pretty interesting. And they do have taxi service, Uber. They have um, a shuttle. You can catch a shuttle that goes from one end of the island to the other and some other places in between. Um, the drugstore there is really cool. It's an old-fashioned drugstore. There's a camera shop in the back part of it. Where you can get your camera supplied and get your pictures made there. And um, there's all sorts of things like that. Um, they also have a soda shop in there where you can get a you know, nice ice cream sundae or malt or something like that. Really neat, nice, old-fashioned kind where they, you know, they fix it in those little metal um, cups, <laughs> metal container cups. I actually had to buy me some of those because I, I, I don't know, ice cream just tastes different. Milkshakes taste different when you make them in those little stainless steel cups. <laughs> so I went actually bought me some of those <laughs> and I love to fix my milkshakes in those. 
But they do have that. They have the malt and soda shop. And there's a, a really cool thrift store down there. There's, uh, like I said, there's a couple of restaurants, a couple of hotels. There's down on the um, marina, down on the docks, there's um, a restaurant down there. And like I said, there's little, little pubs here and there for you to go and visit with the fishermen. <laughs> And what else is there? There's uh, two banks. You go a bank and a credit union, I believe. There's a really nice library in Sitka. Super nice. I love it. It's you can sit in the library and read your books and look out. The, they have big bay windows, and they have seats all in front of them. And you can look out through there, and you can see um, bald eagles. Oh, there's a huge bald eagle's nest just outside of the library window someone's property, someone's home. You can see that. You can see great blue herrings out there walking around catching fish. You can actually sometimes see humpback whales from just the window of the library. And you can see sea lions that come right up there and you can watch the boats coming in and out. And I'm going to do a um, video also for people who enjoy different fishing techniques and things like that. I'm going to do a video on uh, fishing in Sitka and the different types of boats and the different types of fishing techniques they have. So that'll be another whole video. I'll we'll talk a little bit also on that one about um, some of the fishing charters that you can take. Some of the locally owned fishing charters. So not all the fishing charters in Sitka are owned by actual Sitkins. Uh, a lot of them are people who come up from the lower 48 during the summer and run fishing charters out of Sitka. So um, there's quite a few fishing charters to choose from. But I'll go over a lot of that stuff when I do one on fishing and all about the, the salmon um, hatcheries and the disputes between um, farm raised sa salmon and and natural salmon and things like that. I'll go over a lot of that stuff in the fishing one because I know there's a lot of people who are really interested in different fishing techniques and things of different places in Alaska. Um, also, there are one, two, three, three marinas, I believe. Yeah, I think there's three. There's one, two, I think three or four. <laughs> but one really interesting thing is that there are more boat slips in Sitka than anywhere else in, in Alaska. And there's enough boat slips in Sitka for almost every single person on the island to have one and a half boats. <laughs> so it's pretty interesting. Oh, and the population of Sitka. Is, um, during the summer, there's about six thousand, or during the off season, there's about 6,000. 700 people that live there. Uh, during the summer, when all the um, tour workers, seasonal workers are there, there's about 9,000 people in Sitka, give or take a few. And they have a volunteer fire department, and they have um, churches. There's a Seventh-day Adventist church, there's a, um, a Baptist church, a Methodist church, there's a Russian Orthodox church, there's a non-denominational church there too. Um, there's also a Salvation Army and store and uh, like a shelter for homeless people if they want to stay there. And they, they feed them their meals and things like that. There are a few homeless people in Sitka, mostly natives. Uh, not anything wrong with that. I mean, they're just people who um, who just you know, don't have the ways or the means to live anywhere else. So. I take good care of them there at the Salvation Army. And there's a couple other little thrift stores. And as far as first um, fast food, the only fast food you're going to get there that you get down on the lower 48 is the McDonald's and Subway. That's the only two fast food restaurants in Sitka. There's a lot of um, like locally owned restaurants there in Sitka, some really good ones. And one of my favorite places to eat is called the Mean Queen, and it's like a bar and restaurant type thing. Upstairs, they serve pizza and some other finger foods. So pizza is so amazingly good. It's um, wood fired, the brick oven, 
and it's super delicious. I highly recommend eating there. You eat there and you are upstairs. You're in the second story, so you can actually look out over the, the bay there and you can see the inlet. You can see Humpback Wells right out the window. It's just seeing all the boats coming in and going out is so, so interesting. Um, but that's, that's probably my favorite place to eat there. It's um, the Mean Queen. But pretty much everywhere I ever ate there was really good except for the one restaurant that's in a hotel there. I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to um, say anything bad about it, but it's owned by one of the cruise ship companies. And it's very expensive and the service, when I was there, I went there twice and both times I went there the service wasn't so great and it was super expensive and you really didn't get that much food and the one time I went there the food was actually kind of cold. It was the, mm, about $20, $20-$21 for a hamburger there at that restaurant. It was. 17 or 18 dollars for a house salad <laughs> so uh, unless you really like to spend a lot of money somewhere it's, I wouldn't recommend going there but I, like I said I'm not going to name names um, it is like the only restaurant in a hotel so I should tell you <laughs> uh, I think it actually says on the sign who owns it but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go there I'm not gonna say anything bad about the cruise ship companies because they do bring a lot of uh, revenue into Sitka, um, but I know that some of the local people there are kind of have kind of mixed feelings about it. It's, it's great that they bring in that extra revenue and everything, but it brings in just tons and tons of people, and they don't always know exactly how many people are on each ship. They're not always informed of that, like they should be. So that kind of causes a little bit of problem for the local people there, but all in all, I think they, I think they appreciate what the, what the cruise ship industry brings into them, because it does bring in a lot of revenue for this um, city, the community. Um, what else is there? There's a game room there, and one of the restaurants down in a basement underneath the thrift, sh thrift shop. And they have, um, they have uh, lots of video games. You can have birthday parties there and things like that. They serve pizza and Mexican food and uh, just all kinds of stuff. It's really good too. It's probably my second favorite place, or second or third place. Um, one of my favorite places to eat was actually at the C-Mart, which is one of their grocery stores. <laughs> and there's one, two, three, three grocery stores in Sitka. Um, there's the Sea Mart is right on the edge of the water, and again you can you can sit in the deli. They have benches in the deli, or they have tables and benches in the deli, and you can order your food and get it. And then you can go and sit by the windows, and again you can see sea lions, humpback whales, orcas, see the boats going by. Just beautiful, just absolutely beautiful to, to be there. McDonald's is the same way, which is kind of cool. There's not too many McDonald's in the world that you can actually see humpbacks out the window of. So it's pretty cool. Um, what else? There's another little like a convenience store there. It's open 24 hours a day, every day of the year. It's called the Munchie Mart. And they have um, a little deli in there of nachos that you can get. Um, hot dogs, things like that. There's two veterinarians on the island. You have pets. There's one pretty much at each end of the island. There's three campgrounds. So if you happen to want to um, jump on board the ferry with your RV or if you want to just tent camp or whatever, there are three campgrounds. One of them is in the, Na uh, the Tongass National Forest, which is really, really nice. It's the Tongass National Forest um, campground. Official National Forest Campground, and um, super nice. That we, my mom and I and Shaggy, we, we camped there quite a bit. It was super nice. Um, there's actually an artesian well inside the campground. You can get bottles of water and stuff like that. Nice cold Alaskan artesian water. 
so that's cool. And um, just a pic few picnic areas there. We can have picnics. And there's um, a pond that you can swim in. Um, there's down near the um, Tongass National Forest, or down in the Tongass National Forest, there's a really nice uh, hiking boardwalk that you can hike on. Um, super cool. It's in the um, Stargavin Recreation Area. And there's, like I said, there's the marinas. Oh, there's another marina down there, too. <laughs> I don't know. There's like four marinas, I guess. <laughs> They're all just really nice to just go down and sit at the marina and watch the boats come in and go out. There's um, churches, like I said, there's schools, there's uh, two uh, medical facilities, there's like a clinic, a uh, hospital type place, and then there's another hospital over on Japonski Island, which Japonski Island is attached to Sitka by uh, a bridge, a really neat bridge. Um, the bridge was actually the very first um, hanging steel bridge in the United States. It's the first, first one ever built in the United States. And it, they had to have a way to where the, the really tall boats, fishing boats, could make it through there. So it actually is a, a hanging bridge. And it's uh, pretty high up there. You couldn't have like pylons and things like that because the, and the little um, area where it goes through is not extremely wide and uh, they actually had to dredge it out in order to be able to get some of those boats in and out of there. And they also had to dredge over where the cruise ship dock is. They had to um, dredge that out so some of the bigger cruise ships could actually make it in there without dragging bottom and getting stuck. Because <laughs> the tides there in uh, Sitka are so, so erratic. You know, you can have a really low tide and then the next thing you know you've got a really high tide and then it can go way back down to a really low tide and so they have to uh, compensate for the tide so they have to build a bridge pretty high. But it goes over to Japonski Island um, and over in Japonski Island is where the airport is, Alaska Airlines Airport over there. You can, um, you can fly in and out with Alaska Airlines. I think there might be some other flights that come in straight from Washington. There's flights that come in from a few different places. Um, the airport there, <laughs> uh, like I said, it does have uh, major airlines coming in there. Major Alaska Airlines comes in there. And all it is is uh, one runway. And the runway, if they were to not stop at the end of the runway or take off from the end of the runway, they would actually go right over into the water. So the runway there is, is very tricky. They say it's one of the hardest runways to land um, a big jet on because of that. But um, and they have someone also that when there's a flight coming in or going out, they have to go out there and they shoot fireworks. <laughs> These little fireworks, they shoot them to get rid of the, the bald eagles and stuff that tend to get near the, the runway. So they have someone who goes out and shoots off fireworks to get rid of the the birds and things so <laughs> they don't um, get hit or you know, cause the plane to crash or something. So the airport there is super nice. It's very small but it's just really really cool. Uh, besides the Alaska Airlines that come in and out with the big airplanes there's also small planes there you can catch. There's a seaplane um, airport or landing area there where you can actually catch a seaplane and everything. Or you can take uh, some of the other smaller planes out to different islands and things like that. Um, they take people out to some of the, the remote lodges that are on the islands out there in Sitka, or out around Sitka. Um, they also have a couple of flights and tours too out of there. They can take you flying over about Mount Edgecombe, which is a volcano. And um, so you can do all that at the airport. It's a really cool restaurant at the airport. My mom and I used to love to go there and get breakfast. <laughs> you get a huge breakfast. Um, with airport prices, you know, it wasn't too reasonable, but it was so worth it. It was super good. <laughs> it was a huge breakfast. They brought you a lot of food. And they were also known for their, um, their locally made homemade pies. People that flew into Sitka would come into the restaurant and buy a whole pie. Could buy a whole pie for like 20 bucks. Um, they had all kinds of pies. They had cream pies, and they had um, 
this one I really loved. It was a, um, a four or five berry pie. It had strawberries, it had rhubarb, it had um, apples, it had um, what else did it have in it? Cherry, I think. I don't know. It had all kinds of good stuff in it, all kinds of fruits. Super good. I love that pie. You can get a scoop of ice cream to go on it, of course. But you could buy a slice or you could buy a whole pie. And so that's one thing that, <laughs> that the airport was made, was known for. There's also a small gift shop in the airport, which is cool. And, um, let's see, rental cars. You can get rental cars there right at the airport. So if you were to fly into Sitka, you could actually rent a rental car right there. Um, the cost of food is, like I said, it's island prices. I mean, they have to. You have to understand it because they have to barge food in, they have to bring it in on the ferry, they have to fly some of it in, so it's a little more, you know, to to buy the food that they serve for you. Um, and out on Duponsky Island is also where the Coast Guard facility is, um, and the, um, the University of Alaska Little College is over there, Remote College is over there. And um, the hospital, one of the hospitals is over there also in Japotsky Island. So, uh, back to Sitka. Take the bridge back over. <laughs> Take the bridge over. Back to Sitka. Um, they have the, some of the attractions that they have are the um, Alaska Raptor Center. Or Sitka, Alaska, Sitka Raptor Center. Anyway, they have a raptor center there. It's where they get birds in from all over the state. A lot of bald eagles, um, hawks, owls, whatever, all kinds of birds, seabirds, shorebirds. And they get them in from all over the state, just about. They fly them into Sitka and they rehab them and release them back into the wild. If they're able to go back into the wild, they do have some birds there that will be there for the rest of their lives because they got injured or, or whatever and they can't go back out into the wild. Um, it's pretty cool if you're from the Smoky Mountains and you know Dollywood, you know that Dolly also has eagles there in her eagle preserve there. Actually one of those uh, eagles at Dollywood is from the Sitka Raptor Center. They sent it all the way down to Dollywood a few years ago, several years ago. So one of the there at Dollywood is actually from Sitka, Alaska, which is pretty interesting. <laughs> but you can go there, they do tours, or you can just walk around and look at the birds yourself. And they have the, um, the workers there showing you the birds and telling you about them and everything. It's a pretty cool place. There's a walking trail, hiking trail. You can go back into the woods and see, see birds in the wild. And it's really beautiful back in there. It goes down into um, the creek wade in the creek and everything. Super pretty back there. So there's the Alaska, or the Alaska Raptor Center. And there's also the um, Sitka, or not Sitka, yeah Sitka. <laughs> I'm thinking Seward, now I'm in Sitka. Sitka Sea Life Center there. And they have just all kinds of hands-on, stick your hands in the water, touch the anemones and, and cucumbers, sea cucumbers and things like that. You stick your water right into the water tanks there and you can touch the, the fish and everything. At least you could when I was there. They may have changed that too because of COVID. And they have, you know, just um, um, sea life that's in the area in the tanks. And they also have a tide pool tour that you can go on and they'll take you out to a tide pool and you'll kind of look around the tide pool and see all kinds of cool things are in there. And they also raise some fish, some salmon there and stuff. It's like a little fish hatchery too. Really nice place to go. Very enjoyable. And um, there's also the um, the Totem Pole Park, which is a park um, it's walking trails through the woods, beautiful woods, part of the, the forest. And um, there's totem poles, um, historic totem poles there in the park really pretty. There's also a museum, the Clinkett Museum, which tells about the history of the native people there in Sitka. It's a really neat um, museum and there's also like a art 
uh, working area there where the totem pole artists will actually be working on some of the totem poles sometimes, uh, creating new to uh, totem poles. And you can watch them work. It's really neat. And there's also a tide pool there that you can go out and explore, look around and see what's been washed in with the tides. It's so cool. I love tide pools. <laughs> we should do a whole video on just tide pools. <laughs> and then, um, then there's the, um, um, oh, what's the name of it? The Fortress of the Bears. The Fortress of the Bears is a place where they turned a water treatment facility. They took the big, um, like, cement water where all the water used to be and they filtered it and all that stuff. It's in a water treatment place, old water treatment place. And they've turned it into a, a bear sanctuary for some rescue bears and it's a very fun place you can go up on a bridge and you can stand on the bridge and you can watch the bears down in the water and I'll put a, a few pictures on here of that uh, but the fortress of the bears is an amazing place to go very good facility they um, they teach the bears they've taught the bears how to paint <laughs> you can watch them paint um, so yeah these are huge huge uh, coastal brown bears that they have. They also have a couple little Kodiak bears too. They did when I was there. They were new. And they have black bears. And it's just a really neat place to go. It's one of the, all of these attractions you can actually take as excursions off of your cruise ships. So if you're ever there on a cruise ship, you can go to any of those places. And that's where the handy dandy little souvenir booklets come in and you can get a hold of the Sitka Visitor Center, Sitka Chamber of Commerce or whatever and uh, request one of these and they're really nice. They're, they have coupons and things like that in there. They tell you all about the attractions. They have maps, all sorts of things. So these, like I said, these are super, super good for when you're wanting to try and figure out where you want to go in Alaska. Just get a hold of some of the Chamber of Commerce or Visitor Centers and have them send you a travel bag and they don't cost anything. So, I highly recommend getting these. Um, also, inside of it was um, another, little, another little map and also all the attractions that are in Sitka. So, it's got everything you need to know there. It's got a downtown map of Sitka. So, everything that's there. I'll take a picture of the front and the back of this and put it on uh, between recordings. Um, what else? The Fortress of the Bears, like I said, is a really cool place to go. There's also a place at one of the marinas there where you can go and it's where they do all their net repair for their fishing boats and you can actually go there and watch the, the fishermen repairing their nets which <laughs> to me it was really interesting. To other people it might be up. Uh, but to me it was interesting. It was really cool to watch them with these gigantic nets uh, fixing them. Yeah. Fixing them if they had holes in them and stuff like that. Putting new weights and things on them. So that's a really cool place to go if you're into that kind of thing. Um, let's see. Smarts, grocery store, campgrounds. Um, Alamarine Marine Tours. Like I said, if you're on a cruise ship and you get a chance to book an Alamarine Marine Tours, I highly, highly recommend the Alamarine Marine Tours. There's several different uh, tours that they do. They have a Zodiac, which is a big rubber raft. And you can take the Zodiac tours, um, and it takes you out to um, the new island that they built out there. And you can go out there, and um, it's called Finn Island. And the year I was there, they had just built it, and they just started using it the year I was there. And I was lucky enough to be on the boat that um, took people out there. They have several different boats. Some of them are really big boats, double-deckers. Uh, they also have some smaller boats, like I said, they have the Zodiac and then they have the smaller boat, just small catamaran, and that's the one I was on. We did beach landings and, and things like that. It was a lot of fun. But they took you out to Finn Island, which is their, their own personal island. Beautiful place. Absolutely beautiful. You can walk along the shore, you can pick up um, shells and cool rocks and roof of sponges, <laughs> different things like that. Really neat. And then you have your meal, which is absolutely amazing. They have this uh, prime rib, and they have this prime rib soup that they make. It's like a roast 
beef soup. Oh, it's so good. But it's like a buffet kind of thing. You eat all you want. And they have king crab legs. They have crab legs. Like, I've never seen crab legs that big before. But they have king crab legs, prime rib, and all the fixings to go with it. And some amazing desserts also. Like I said, it's a day lodge. It's, um, it's out on the island. It's a beautiful place to eat. You can eat indoors or you can eat outdoors out on the deck. And you can watch the sea otters and, and stuff right out there. And bald eagles come right there close to the to the lodge. Um, very, very beautiful. I highly recommend if you get a chance to go there do that. After you have your meal, if they have a bonfire going down by the by the beach or on the beach, you can go there and um, make s'mores. You have all kinds of s'mores to make. You can have Reese's peanut butter cups to go on your s'mores if you prefer. <laughs> and uh yeah the, uh, the guides and the hosts and things will actually help you um, make your s'mores. And the captain usually will come down to the captain of the boat and you can talk to the captain and it's really interesting. Um, the Zodiac also takes people out there to Finn Island. The Zodiac takes people out there and then the smaller boat also takes people out there. Now the tours are three hours, so you have usually an hour on the water a little bit of a tour and then you 30 minutes to an hour when you first get out there and then you go eat you know about an hour hour and a half depends and then you spend the rest of the time what do we have left of the three hours out looking for for wildlife again it's super cool mm -hmm. so i highly recommend an excursion with Alan marine tours and like i said i don't i don't get paid for any of the things that i talk about in my videos and i just talk about them because it's something that I really, really highly recommend and things that I have experienced myself and really enjoyed. Um, I'm never really going to talk about things that I haven't myself experienced. And if I don't like something that I experience, I'm just basically not going to talk about it. <laughs> because it might have just been a bad experience for me and I don't want to turn people against, um, you know, going on an excursion. I don't want to take money out of the pockets of, of these people that run excursions and, and things like that. So if I ever have a bad experience, I'm not really going to talk about it on here. I'm going to talk about the good experiences and things that I highly recommend, things that I've experienced myself. Um, and that's Alan Rain Tours. There's other fishing um, tours or boat tours that you can take, like about our own small boats, private tours. Island Marine Tours actually offers a private tour too, and there's fishing excursions that you can take. You go out, you catch fish, and they'll actually clean the fish right on the boat for you, or when they get back, and they'll pack it all up for you and send it to wherever you want it sent to, so you don't have to worry about carrying that home in your luggage or anything. <laughs> they'll ship it for you. And I think it's I think the price of shipping your food might be included in the excursion. I'm not sure. You'd have to check on that. Don't, don't quote me on that because I don't know. <laughs> I just know that they pick up and ship out a lot of a lot of fish. My mom and I were eating breakfast once at the at the airport, and they came on the intercom and said that um, everyone would have to carry on all their luggage because there wasn't room in the in the luggage compartment for anything because they had so much fish to, to put on the plane that they were shipping out. <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty funny. Everybody that had uh, had carry-ons or uh, things that they were going to put under the plane in the cargo, they had to actually take on the plane with them. So they had to take all of their carry-on luggage on the plane so that they could be able to uh, ship out all of the, the salmon that people caught. It's not just salmon either, it's other fish too that you can catch, but um, salmon is one of the major, main fish that you'll be catching if you go on a fishing excursion. And like I said, they will absolutely ship it and fly it home for you. Um, so yeah, so the airport's really cool. It's really neat. And um, Japonsky Island is a cool place. Um, so I think... Sitka is a really neat place for people to go and see 
Um, gas prices, there's two gas stations in Sitka, which if you go to Sitka and you spend a week, you're probably not going to use more than a half a tank of gas. <laughs> I would fill up uh, once a month, and I put a half a tank in there. I go back and forth to work every day with that. But, and I would travel around the island too and looking at things and going to all of the different museums and things like that. But yeah, we don't use a lot of gas there. <laughs> there's only, like I said, 12 miles of roadway. And I think it's all pretty much 35 miles per hour average. Some areas are less, some areas are more. It never gets up to 45 or 50. Top speed and <laughs> um, so yeah. Again, if you have any questions, you want to know anything specific, or you want me to cover something else a little more in depth, I am going to be doing a video just on mountain marine tours. I'm going to do like a kind of a mock tour on that, so you kind of see what you get to do if you go on mountain marine tours. And I'm going to do another a video probably on. Um, just the wildlife attractions, like the, the, um, the Sea Life Center and the Fortress of the Bears and the, um, the Raptor Center. I might do a little more in depth on those three places. Just so, because it's just so cool. <laughs> and it's, I just love it. Um, I guess that's it. For this one. Like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna be putting uh, steel pictures and maybe some other footage. And this, of course. So yeah, if you um, if you're looking for a really cool adventure and you want to do something a little different, like I said, I think you could probably fly into Sitka pretty reasonably. Alaska Airlines. And um, you could see it in five or six days. I would give myself a week, maybe ten days or something like that. To really, really take it all in and enjoy it. Because it is absolutely amazing if you wanted to, to go hiking or something like that. Um, they do have, if you want to go out to one of the islands where they have um, national park cabins that you can rent, they do have those. Um, I think you can look up... Um, not sure what you would look up for that. It would probably be under National Park Cabins in Sitka or close to Sitka or whatever, but they're boats that will take you out. Their Island Marine Tours will actually, you can book with them and they'll actually take you out to an island if you're wanting to go out and stay at an island somewhere in one of the National Park Cabins. Um, they're actually really nice. They're very beautiful places. Um, just be wary of the bears, because there are bears in Sitka, quite a few of them. Uh, you wouldn't think that they would be on the islands, but bears can actually spend 30, 40 miles, and they will. They'll swim 30, 40 miles between islands to get to a different island. Um, it's hard to believe that they actually do swim very long distances. And these are coastal brown bears, and that makes them more closer to the size of the polar bear than the grizzly bear. They're huge. Um, and they're not most of them are not acclimated to people like they are in some of the other areas. These are usually pretty wild bears, so just, I mean, and don't be scared of them. Just use caution and, you know, be aware and respect their space. Don't try to walk up to them and pet them or anything. Um, even if they seem welcoming for that, <laughs> why don't we do it? <laughs> and also, if you, there's boat rentals too, if you want to rent a boat from the dock somewhere. I think there's some boat rentals that you can do and take your own boat out or you can go out in a kayak. Uh, Sitka is a really nice place for kayaking. But you can go out to the islands and um, just be aware of the tide changes because it changes very radically there. It can go from, um, I don't know, it can go up to 25, sometimes 30 feet inland. And you don't even really realize that it's going to do that and you might tie your boat up close to the edge of the water and the next thing you know the tide comes in and your boat is completely inaccessible and might even float out with the tide so just beware of that if you are staying there and you sit somewhere on an island just be sure that you um, carry your boat more inland 
to tie it up. And um, beware too, if you are, if you do rent a boat and you're not familiar with that kind of area in a boat, be aware of the kelp forest. You'll see the kelp on top of the waters. Be really, really careful because that kelp is terrible for boat engines. You can you can get that stuff tangled all around your engine blades and it's not a good thing. So just be real careful when you're um, when you're out there in the Sitka Sound or some of the other little water areas. There is a chance of getting in kelp, so just be careful. Um, so yeah, you can you can get out there and stay in one of the national park cabins. Out on some of the islands, there's also like um, hot springs that you can go out to and get in the hot springs. There's um, Mount Edgecombe, which is a, a, a dormant volcano that you can actually get a boat ride out to, or you can, like I said, kayak out there, or you can you know, take a take a, a boat with Allen Marine Tours or, or something like that and then we'll get you out there to the island and you can hike Mount Edgecombe. Um, I have been hearing that there's some rumbling going around <laughs> Mount Edgecombe out there so I don't know. They're not sure if it's volcanic activity or just um, shifting but there's a little, a little bit of activity going around out there by Mount Edgecombe. And when I was there Actually, in 2018, there was um, steam clouds. I'm sure they were steam clouds. They would come out to be just right over. There'd be not another cloud in the sky, and there would be a cloud over Mount Edgecombe. Um, Mount Edgecombe. That's kind of funny. There's a kind of funny story about Mount Edgecombe. I'll tell you guys about it. Um, back several years, there was a there was this guy in town. And it was April Fool's, and he was trying to think of just something really amazing to do for April Fool's Day. He loved to play jokes, really funny. Uh, I'll go into a little bit more detail about it. I'll tell you guys who, what his name was and all that stuff when I do my mock-up tour of the Valor Marine Tours. But um, <laughs> this guy decided he was going to have the best uh, April Fool's Day joke ever. So he got some friends and they loaded up a boat with a whole bunch of tires and they made their way out to the island where Edgecombe is, Salem Island. So they made their way out to the island where Mount Edgecombe is and they climbed up Mount Edgecombe and they put these tires, these old tires, all around the top of the volcano up there. And they lit them on fire. And that next morning people were getting up getting ready to go to work and it looked like Mount Edgecombe was erupting because of all the, the black smoke and, and and everything coming up from Mount Edgecombe and everybody freaked out they were like oh my gosh Mount Edgecombe is, is erupting and then um, there was you know the Coast Guard or whatever flew up there to check it out to see what was going on and they had um, spray painted or put rocks there and I'm not sure exactly what they did. I don't remember that detail but they actually um, rode out up there on top of the, the mountain and it said April Fools. <laughs> and they got a little bit of trouble. They got into some trouble and everything but that joke actually turned out to be one of the top 10 best April Fools Day jokes ever. And you can actually Google that and out about it. <laughs> so it's just something funny. But I guess I guess that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's two gas stations on Sitka. One, two, three gas stations actually. And there's two marine gas stations where you can get gas for your boats. And yeah, believe it or not, we actually was actually some chartered yachts that people had chartered from different places. One came from Australia a lot, but there was actually chartered yachts. So if you have plenty of money and you wanted to do a chartered yacht, they can actually go and dock into Sitka. So that's another way that you could actually go. If you own your own boat and you're very experienced with you know long distance boating, you could actually 
take your boat all the way into Sitka. They do, um, they do allow transient boats in certain areas. Some areas don't allow the transient boats. They're from there. In the summer, it's really cool in Sitka because um, the Delis catch. I watch the Delis catch. I love the Delis catch, but uh, a lot of the the crabbing boats they bring them into Sitka, and I'll go over this too when I do the fishing video. When I do the fishing video, a lot of the boats from the, the crabbing show or the Delis catch the crab boats come into Sitka, and they they work as what's known as a tender. And basically what they do is they go out to where the, the big boats are out fishing for salmon and they get out there and they find a good spot. They don't want to come back in. So the, the tenders will go out and um, haul their boat, to haul their fish, they'll empty their fish into the tender and they'll bring it back to the cannery and they'll get the slip for the, the fishermen out there, they'll tell them whose who's, uh, fish it is, they'll weigh it and everything. And then when they do decide to come in from wherever they are, they can just go straight to the tree and say, hey, um, I sent this many pounds of fish in and this is my name and all of that and their, fish, their money will be there for the fish that they caught. So those tenders are really important for the fishermen that are way out there that don't want to come in every day. and drop off their fish. But a lot of those tender boats are, like I said, they're the boats from uh, the actual show. So that's pretty neat to see in the summertime. In the National Geographic um, boat, tour boat, comes through Sitka. In fact, you can catch it there in Sitka, I believe. But that's a really cool cruise that you could take to the National Geographic. They have um, some really cool destinations with that National Geographic touring boat. It's so cool if you don't want to do the traditional cruise. Um, there's lots of ways to get to Sitka without having to actually take a cruise. Like I said, you can go on the ferry and go all the way up from Bellingham, Washington, or you can go you can fly into Anchorage, take a ferry from Whittier to Sitka, or you could uh, fly from Anchorage to Sitka, or you could fly from the lower 48 to Sitka. I mean, there's lots of ways to go. I, I highly recommend going there. It's a beautiful place. People are super nice. I love the people that live in Sitka. Also, so, so nice. Lots of things to do. Not extremely expensive. They say the grocery store this last year or so, last year, two years, has had a lot of trouble keeping things in stock, but you know that's to be expected because a lot of people bought stuff up and kind of cleared out the shelves and there for a little while they were actually having like waiting lists for milk and bread and, and essentials like that. So you have to be on like a waiting list in order to get that when it came in. I'm sure that's a lot better now, I hope so anyway. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Like I said, if you have any questions or want to know something specific or you know, just have more questions or want some help to figure out how to get there and what to see in maybe itinerary or something like that, I can help you with that. Again, I don't, I don't charge for that. It's just something I enjoy doing. I'd love for everyone in the world to get to see uh, Alaska. Alaska is one of those places that you definitely need to go at some point. I guess that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been informative. I hope uh, it's been fun to watch. And I hope you have a blessed day, blessed night. And yeah, just stay safe out there, whatever you do, and enjoy yourself. Just respect nature, respect the earth. You know, do your part. Don't leave your trash. Don't carve on the trees. Don't spray paint anything, don't don't carve anything. And just, you know, take care of it like it was your property. Oh, some of you. <laughs> some of you, I don't know about that. Just respect it. Take care of it. Enjoy it. Leave it the way you found it for the next person to enjoy. 
if you need to write on something, write on a guest book. You know, do some artwork on a guest book page or something. Mm -hmm. If you want the world to know you were there, you know, write it on a piece of paper and hold it up and say, I was here, it's it good. Put the date on it, take a selfie and throw your piece of paper in the dumpster or the garbage or something. <laughs> but that's the way to do it. Don't make those little rock statues in the river because it can mess up the flow of the river and stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a video on uh, conservation too and and protecting our environment and things you can do to, to, to for animal safety and well-being and for the earth's safety and well-being and for your own safety and well-being. <laughs> Anyway, I guess that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I really, really appreciate you watching. And I hope that you will subscribe and watch some of my other videos. And give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And comments are always welcome. As long as they're nice. And, yeah, I guess that's it. So, thanks for watching. And I will um, talk to you on the next video. Thank you, guys. God bless you all. Have a great day.